What is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Ford Air. You got me Salman here today and we are at Resto Mod Air and we're gonna do a shop tour. We got Mike and uh, what do we have in store How's it here? going? Well, a lot, a lot actually. We can show you around the showroom if you actually are local and have the ability to stop by, put your hands on things, touch things. It's actually a really nice showroom. I had no idea, kind of. Appreciate it. I can remember where I've seen a lot of the stuff before because it kind of like, looks like your SEMA displays, yeah. but most companies don't have a nice showroom anymore. It's like a thing of the past. Yeah, you know, we have to be here a lot. And so we kind of want to make it a cool atmosphere that we actually enjoy working in and a change. You know, when we, we get that a lot. When customers come in, they go, wow, you know, we kind of expected something that was very low key, but you know, that's kind of who we are. We, we, we do things big when we do it. So. I like it. Yeah, so this is the showroom. Um, it's not your typical showroom, like you said. So we've got like a lounge area over here where customers come in and we kind of sit down and build out uh, different parts that they want. We can offer things that we don't offer on the website here when they come in local. Nice. So we can go over different finishes, different kind of build out. I love events. how many different options you have because like literally you could choose any of these events and there's so many different ones and then and it's like unlimited customization. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's not even showing the different colors and, and stuff that we offer too. Um, our website's already, you know, full of different options, but to put different color options in there is is kind of astronomical and people get lost on the site. So oh, yeah. we actually offer different events here when you come in than on the website and at SEMA. So we actually have different um, so styles cool. that you don't see really? on the website. Oh yeah. So there's local yeah. only styles. Absolutely, yeah. So we've got <clears throat> pool table, obviously. We have customers come in, kind of hang out. This is kind of the vibe that we have here. We have a bar, we actually have a keg, um, canned beers, bottled beers. Uh, in the morning, um, the cappuccinos special. and coffees, Heck yeah. you know what I mean? So, Dude, what is yeah. up with these? I haven't seen this before. Yeah, so those are actually supposed to go live today on an on our app, huh. our RSTMB app, um, right. at a discounted price. Uh, big discount to kind of promote them. Dude, that is so rad. So we're calling those the halo vents. Uh, if you notice, there's a, a glow, a halo glow around them that come in red, blue, green, and white right now. We'll release some other colors uh, in the future, but we're going to release them in two different versions, uh, the deep dish like this, and then the quantum version. So, I love it. Yeah. That's super cool. I bet people are gonna eat that up. I, I, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. And we've got where this is gonna end up going in the future, how it ties into the electronics of our systems is gonna be pretty rad, to well, be honest with you. Let's talk a little bit about some of these systems. Sure. So probably the most popular unit that we have is our Haymaker unit. And that's probably because it's the biggest, baddest one that's out there. Uh, fits most, you know, full size, full body cars. Um, so the Haymaker, the largest unit, coil size, blower motor size out, um, gives you your dash, your defrost, your floor, um, all built into a system that is designed uh, for a flat firewall vehicle. So um, fits Camaros, Chevelles, uh, trucks. I mean, we even have this in our F100. That's what I think I'm, I have the Haymaker for Goldust, my, my yeah. truck. Yeah. And it is supposed to cool the whole thing down. I mean, I was talking with Jonathan, I'm like, do I need two? He's like, bro, this one's gonna <laughs> freeze you out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So th this is our most popular, and then we step it down to what we call the Vapor 3. So it's a smaller package, okay. um, still gives you your dash, and it gives you your defrost. And then the floor, because of size restraints, is built into the unit, so it's less ducting that you have to run. So you actually save some space. Nice. Um, so that's the Vapor 3. And then we will go down to the Bantam. Um, same scenario, except for we go down to three vents for your dash, two for your defrost, and then again, it has the, the floor built in for space restraints as well. And that's the smallest unit. No, actually, oh. the next one over, which is our Cyclone, this is the smallest unit. Man, so is it is heat AC defrost. Wow. So three on the dash, two defrost, and then we have one floor. So these are for the really small kind of roadsters, um, even small two-seater trucks where you need some AC 
um, but you have a whole lot of other stuff in your dash. I think I remember I was by Salvage the Savage and they put that into yep. the EV truck. Yes. Because they just didn't have any space. Exactly, yep. So they all blow the same temperature, it's just efficiency. So the larger ones can turn air faster yeah, to keep the temperature efficient. down, right? And then the Vapor 2. Um, so this is going up, back up to a midsize unit. Um, but it's it's a lot more narrow. So we're going from a nine inch depth on the largest ones that we have Down to like a seven inch depth. Okay, so and that's the vapor 2 and all of them are Bluetooth Of course, so you can use our app to control them or you can even get this guy Which is the Bluetooth remote so you can have zero controls put this on your key fob and Actually control your fan your mode and your temperature that is really cool, but for me, it's all about the controls. Like, yeah. we can even walk over to that wall just to show them. Like, <laughs> I remember, I mean, I've been doing this for a while, so right when you guys came out, I was like, wow, look at these dudes. Like, everything is billet and, like, super rad, and you guys have basically kept with cornering that part of the market. Like, it's super cool to see all of this stuff. Thank you. Yeah, so we, we have, I believe, seven different main body types of controls. Um, and then obviously different finishes, different backlit um, colors, different knob configurations. So the pods and we haven't gotten around to it. So um, this is the Nook. Um, they again have back, backlighting colors to match the vents that we just released today. So you have your red, blue, green, and white. Um, and some of them, including here, I'll see them some different colors here. You're not the audio technical video guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we should have done this before. I forgot about these. It's all good. But um, even our, th this is still one of our most popular is, is the Elevate controls. So, so this glue, uh, you know, these glow around the edge um, and they're full RGB as well. So controls are, are really rad. We've got some new bulkheads that are coming out in the next couple weeks. So this is usually one of those um, forgotten items that customers have to be reminded about. How are you going to transition from the interior to the engine compartment with your hoses? We're just gonna cut some holes and run the, run the tubes right through. Yeah, it doesn't always work too well when that <laughs> happens. <laughs> and then, of course, um, we have, I believe, over 990 different options of wow. that. Wow. Um, There's literally something for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and we have probably seven more versions in the works that we're just systematically slowly released, not to overwhelm people. Um, I really love the square vents because everything on the market is a round vent. So we released our square and then to support those, a rectangular vent. I like it. And then the little tiny guys, there's a lot of times on the dash, there's not a lot of dash space to put a larger vent. And sometimes you, in the corners, above a glove box or something like that, these little, what we call the nano vents, which happen to be the exact same size as the knobs. The knobs. Huh. So if you put these next to each other and put them in line, they actually look pretty rad. That's cool. I've seen one of my buddies put one of these right under his uh, his steering column pointing at him. Yeah. And he's like, that's my ball cooler. Yes. <laughs> so there's a funny story, but GM did have a, uh, in the late 60s and 70s, a lot of the factory air vehicles had vents underneath the steering column and glove box. And internally in GM, they were dubbed crotch coolers. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> So that's the, that's the showroom. Super rad. So we can come through here. So in this area here is where our sales and tech guys take care of you. So we need to place an order, have questions about, you know, what's going to fit or any recommendations all the way to, hey, where's this blue wire, red wire go? These are the guys that take care of you. Nice. So if anybody's curious, you're not gonna talk to somebody that you can't understand. <laughs> That's pretty much it, unless they hit up the keg first. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and we have to watch these guys because they're really close to the keg, so. <laughs> so in here, we've got our marketing team. What up? What's up? 
So we've got social media in here. We have our uh, web development. Actually, they're next door. We'll go in there in a second. We have our directors, the guys that are keeping the whips on all the other guys. A couple of these guys are missing. I don't know where they're at. But anyhow, so we have this team takes care of all the social media, websites, pricing. I don't know what all do you guys do. I don't even know. <laughs> everything graphic wise uh, and everything that's print material that's physical that you handle. Awesome. I love that you guys carry the vibes through everywhere. And so in here, we'll go down kind of the hallways and I'll show you all the different weird stuff that we have on the walls. So these are our web guys. Hello. So they take care of the websites. Yeah, they're into their computers, right? <laughs> they don't like to be bothered. That's why they've got an office of their own. So um, in here is our show, our showroom. In here is our conference room. So we have our meetings in here, uh, weekly meetings, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, brainstorm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Come I really it. love the aesthetic. Like whoever, I'm assuming it's you, came up with how cool <laughs> the aesthetics are gonna look. Great job. So we, so the conference room table, we actually built the conference room table in here. Wow. So it's not moving. Uh, it's probably gonna live in this building forever. So even so, after you move, it's just, it's absolutely. It. <laughs> yeah, and if you notice the uh, cubicles that the guys are in, we built these as well. Has a cool, Little carburetor light ah, for the guys. That is cool. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, everything in here we built. Not very much of it is actually bought. Yeah. So um, this is Drew eating his lunch. Hello. Is it good? <laughs> very good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> he does our purchasing and whatnot. Um, this here's my office here. Ooh. Not much happens in here, but private office. I like everything about it. Man, you guys have some cool branding. I've always appreciated that. Well, tell me a little bit about your bike. So, you know, the thing is, is I walk around this so often that I don't even see it anymore. <laughs> um, actually, it's uh, a CB550 uh, that we're cutting into a cafe racer. Beautiful. Um, really, all we have to do is the seat and the wiring and she's ready to rock and roll. We just kind of put her in here and then we have so busy on projects it's probably been sitting here for about a year so hopefully we can get her done this winter time that'd be cool yeah so some more offices i don't think anybody's in here but we actually print all our own t-shirts t-shirt really? designs and everything so this is one of the new shirts that we've been working on i like it here but little black on black action with a little gold yeah you know they were trying to test out different colors and, oh, and stuff so super cool yeah so we uh, we're going to release what we're calling the RSTMD line this is um, our apparel line so we have the t-shirts the made we brought in people did different sizing so we're trying to find the perfect size t-shirt for most guys not too small not too big so that's that's kind of here. We're about to have, I'd say, probably 25 different designs and t-shirts and hoodies in the next couple weeks as well. That's cool. And we'll go, this way is our break room area. All right. So this is where all the talent's at. Oh yeah. So all the talent is out here. So this is our production line. I'll kind of tell you, we have three different production lines going at all times. So we have a production line on this side, one in the middle, and one on the other side. Wow. So at the, at the front of each production line is where the evaporators, which most people know of the unit that blows the cold and hot air, this is where they're put together, okay? And so as it rolls down, other components get added on to it. So your vents, uh, wiring, any hardware and stuff like that gets added to the unit as it comes down the line. Here with the different bags and such. I love how tidy everything is. And then here's where we program all of the units. 
we function test every single unit to make sure that they operate correctly. So they're under full load, compressor and everything. Um, every unit takes at least three to five minutes to calibrate. As we run it, we function test it, make sure that it's absolutely perfect. So when you get it, it in the in. mail, it's already been tested, QC'd. Absolutely. Something happened during shipping, if anything happens. Right. So if anything happened, it was probably physical damage in shipping or something like that. But I can show you the, the packaging is actually, we're kind of proud of it, let's put it that way. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so absolutely, every, every single one is flow test, make sure that the dash is sealing, defrost is sealing, floor is sealing, that we're getting the correct voltage, the compressor's kicking on when it needs to, when it's not, that the amps are right, everything happens here. But this is the other side, so we run Rustomod down the right side and then we run our sister company down the left side, which is classic AutoWare. Same kind of layout, uh, QC um, and programming on the ends. And so this is where all the small components get put into um, your systems. So the wiring, temperature control valves, any kind of switching, nuts, bolts, and screws, as you can see here. All right, Eric? Yep. <laughs> So what are some of the differences between like uh, what are the differences between the two brands, or just kind of more sure fit, you know, installed type stuff? Yeah, the, the most the most simple way of putting the, the two different brands is Class Autoware is designed for a direct bolt-in daily driver guy, guy that's not doing body work, filling in any firewalls, uh, wants it to look more stock. It's more about function. And so Restomod Air was started 10 years ago, as a matter of fact, for those guys that wanted to fill the firewall, like, like what we know as is custom. Modern, custom vehicles, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So they don't have, uh, you know, they don't want plastic vents, they don't want plastic bulk block off plates in the firewall, so. And so we offer, these are what we call mock boxes. So. One of the biggest things that we offer that most people take advantage of is, you know, how do I know how well it's gonna fit? And so we offer what we call mock boxes. So it's just a rental. You put a $150 deposit down, we send you out an empty, easy to use mock-up unit so you can test fit. Make sure, is this gonna work? Is it not gonna work? Before you get too far. So there's no reason in create, putting all that investment into something and then going, hey, this isn't gonna work. I might have scratched it up or anything like that. It even comes with all the hardware that you can wow. that you can go ahead and weld into your vehicle while you're doing the body phase. Send this back to us. Then when you're ready, purchase the unit, goes right up, bolts right in. Huh. So you don't have two thousand dollars sitting on your garage floor for two years. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So that's kind of the production area. I don't know. We can go over maybe small parts or over here. Let's go. So. In the middle is where a lot of the small parts, so your vents, your bulkheads, your controls are all made by different people. It looks like, here we go. We've got some here, so there's some polished nook going out. I wonder if people realize how much work goes into like making every part fit every time and have the finishes correctly, because like I've, I've worked in machine shops for like wheels. Yeah. And these are way tinier and way more difficult. It is difficult. I mean, it, not as a sales pitch, but our QC is very stringent. Um, nothing is going to pass our QC if it's not a work of art, if it's not absolutely perfect. It's not about time. It's about making sure that the product is what we would put in our vehicle. Um, because there's a lot of money spent on guys putting in air conditioning. It, it, it's not a cheap, you know, at least five thousand dollars right by the time you're installed and everything right and so here we don't have anybody working on it today but all of our satin parts are all hand finished really so that's kind of hand in hand with what we were just talking about on making sure that even the grain look on our aluminum satin parts that we call it are perfect there's no wow. there's no cross hatches or anything like that so so right here you can see Quentin's actually building, what are you building right now? Vapor 3s. Vapor 3s. Yeah. Why don't you show us, what's the inside of a Vapor 3 look like? There's going to be empty. I'm actually starting right now. 
friend over here. These are your coils. You've got your AC heater coil. It stuffs right in there. It's a nice tight fit. Just pretty much push it down. There you go. Like a glove. Like a glove, exactly. Cool. Okay. Right here. Push your butt down there. Once again, another tight fit. You just kind of screw it on there. It's all air tight, so it seals perfectly. Squeeze it on. Got your clips to sit in there. Come up on this side. Pop them out a bit. There you go. So if you notice, if you notice, we, unlike everybody else in the market, we do not glue our housings closed. Our housings are actually screwed in and clipped. The reason for that is if you have a, a issue with your AC coil or your heater coil, they're serviceable, just like an OE. So this unit could be sent back to us. We can take it apart and just replace the coil or repair instead of throwing the whole thing away. Wow. So, yeah, so most of the other guys, they glue them shut. We don't do that because our units are designed to be long-term. Thank you for showing us. Of course, thank you. All right, so that's the production area. So out here is our warehouse where we keep all the raw parts and our finished goods. So you can see here, all of these units here are ready to rock and roll. We nice. try to keep stock in stock all the time. What's your usual like uh, build or wait times? Like if somebody were to call, say I, I need a, a haymaker and this and that and so right now we're looking about four weeks. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's about two weeks longer than we want to be, uh, but as everybody knows, supply chain issues and stuff like that have really kind of created problems. But we're, we're pounding it out. So this is all the EVAPs, and then we have different brackets and different small parts and vents and bulkheads. And you guys have enough compressors? All of that kind of stuff. We have <laughs> the world cornered on compressors right now. I like it. <laughs> So, as we come down into this area, this is all of our, our raw goods. So this is all the parts that it takes to, to build the kits. Everything from different tubes for condenser kits and kits that come off the evaporator to wiring harnesses based off of, uh, you know, whatever's going to fit in your vehicle. Yeah all the way to obviously the coils and plastics so from different glove boxes and housings so that's what all these aisles are are full of i like to see it i like to see every time i come to a manufacturer i just love to see this type of stuff because these are the things that most people never even think about they're just like oh let me order it. It's 1900 bucks. Okay, it'll be here in four weeks. Yeah. You know, and it's like nobody knows that like 20 Americans have to touch their products in order for it to get to them. Absolutely. I, I, an average build material on our systems, there's about 120 different parts that go into just making the box itself. And it touches probably here in our facility, each unit touches about seven different people. And then the raw manufacturing of these obviously touched about two dozen others. So um, everything, all of our raw parts are, are manufactured in the United States. So the, the coils to our foam insulation to our plastics, all of that is done here. That's awesome. Very rarely do we have to source anything from overseas. That's great. It helps with actually having products because the companies that do need stuff from overseas don't have four week wait times. They have to wait, yeah. <laughs> so this, like, here's our brackets, different steel brackets, and for mounting locations and stuff like that to our machine parts on this wall. Ooh. And then these are all the units here that are just waiting to get down the line. So, like I said, we're about four weeks behind. So all of these guys in here are waiting to hit the line to be finalized. Nice. So there's probably about 200 units here, probably about another 50 on the line right now. So they're all waiting pretty much for QC. 
Yes. And then assemble, final assembly. Fi final assembly and, and QC. Nice. Yep. Ooh. So then on this side, this is our R&D area. I finally get to see the F100. <laughs> it's been years I've been looking at this thing. Yeah. So the, we started out, this was our parts runner. And then kind of one thing led to another, led to another. And now, obviously, the fact that it lays out, it's not really going to pick up too many parts for us anymore. No. <laughs> the bed's a little bit too shallow. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. So that one has, obviously, the haymaker in it. it takes up the whole inside there. Oh, yeah. It's still tucked up nice, though, because you got plenty of space for your feet. Like, that, that's still, even though it's the biggest one. Yeah. It, it's the nicest one installed because if you look down below, mm -hmm. you only see like two inches yeah. and it follows the dash line. It's nice and clean. Yeah. Ooh, I love that you got the new vents in here. Yeah, Ooh, let me that. see if I can get them to light up. Dude, this truck is trick. I love the seat. I mean, yeah. So, ooh. Yeah, so we did the white on this one. I love it. And I guess you got Bluetooth controls. Yes, I use Bluetooth, either, either my phone or the key fob. That's so. right. Dude, this thing is trick. We want you to feature this in our magazine. <laughs> it was not, you know, it, it was not built for looks. It was more just so the guys can go around and yeah, it was out of necessity. drive. But yeah, Dude, but it, it turned rad. out pretty nice. I mean, it's in its, I think it's in its third incarnation. This is cool. Dude, that's dope. So in here, I guess, is where you guys do all your development? Yes. So we have a, a small vac machine over here. This is where we do prototyping for plastic forming. Um, we have a small table over here when we're doing bracketry. Um, they're putting in a, a small paint booth over here. Nice. We have a router over here for some small parts. We didn't hit the inside, but on the inside, in our engineering office, we have multiple 3D printers uh, where they print out a lot of the parts for test fitting and stuff. So nice. out here is where we'll bring in different vehicles um, for manufacturing new kits, new bolt-in kits, all the way to um, you know what's going to fit in this, what's going to fit in that. And an example, why do we have the Humvee in here? Because uh, the military came to us and said, hey, can you design a an AC kit for military Humvees. Huh. Uh, and we said, I don't know if we can do that. No, I'm just kidding. We said, hell yeah. So when we got this thing, it was camouflage, um, but we actually make a heat AC system for the military Humvees. That's super which cool. Which turned out pretty badass. And that's that, the one on the dash? Yeah, so that plenum wow. across the top, we yeah. add because in a Humvee, there is no dash. Yeah. In a Hummer, a GM Hummer, they basically took a military Humvee and added interior to it. Huh. But a military Humvee had zero. There was a plenum that was flush across the top that was just heat, but they never designed these things to have air conditioning. And then obviously, you know, going over the Middle East and the wars, it was extremely hot. And they started hodgepodging together different AC kits and systems for these guys, um, where they're actually trying to come together now and blanketly retrofit all of these with air conditioning so very cool um so we have one of these it's awesome we just go run it through town uh it's fun we we did an ls swap on ours nice as a matter of fact it the uh five three diesel is a dog that came with it so then we have our lincoln Ooh. we've been working on this for quite a while um i think she's a about finished. Ooh, that interior, though. Finally. That yeah. is a trick. Yeah, wow. so we we did, a, obviously, a full iPad to control our AC. This one has the haymaker in it as well. It has our new vents. Man, those look cool. In black. We have it where it glows red when they turn on. That's so cool. And then we did a uh, Coyote swap, uh, supercharged. supercharged. Hell yeah. Yeah. Damn. What is that? 
It's a brake booster. Really? Yeah. So wow. We, so we couldn't fit a normal brake booster on the master uh -huh. because of uh, the engine. Yeah. Had to sit far back. So our sister company is Master Power Brakes. Is it really? North Carolina. Huh. One of yeah. my buddies works there. Who? Uh, Josh. He's the engineer over there. He does all the 3D stuff. He has the oh. F100. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So we, we're the same. That so, is very cool. Yeah. We're actually, I'm working with him right now on, on a project I can't talk about. But well, yeah. never mind. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So Master Power Brakes is our sister company out of North Carolina. And then our other sister company is called the Drive Shaft Shop out of North Carolina. So they do a lot of drivetrain, carbon fiber drive shafts, CVs, um, nine inch conversions for high horsepower stuff. Nice. So yeah. Well, let everybody know where's the best place for them to go check you out and check out your products. So the best place, Instagram to see all the new stuff that's coming out. We also have a new app that's being released. If you download the app, it actually has new products that will only be released on the app and specials that will be cheaper. So RSTMD, which is Rust Mod Without the Vowels, on the uh, Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, or check us out online, rustamodair.com. Awesome. Mike, thanks so much for letting us come out here, check this out, and uh, honestly, just give me a tour of this place. It's really cool to see yeah. everything. I appreciate you coming by. Thank you. And uh, for you guys, as always, if you enjoyed this type of video, make sure to smash the subscribe button. If you like this type of content, hit the like button. We'll keep doing it. And drop a comment below. Let me know what your favorite part of this tour was. We'll catch you in the next one.